Hey, Strike Deal fans, Natsu is back with you for another in the uh, TFR series for the F-15 Strike Eagle. Part two, we're going to do a really quick video uh, on uh, warnings and cautions, uh, limits, and uh, a little bit more in-depth on the on the fly-up, how, how it happens and why, and what you do about it. Uh, I wanted to do this uh, as a kind of a quickie, so to speak, uh, because this is going to frustrate a lot of people if they don't understand what the jet is telling them and how they can avoid... Uh, getting in, into constant fly-ups and they're going to get frustrated. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time and then uh, part three will do more of a comprehensive uh, mission using TFR. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about the uh, the limits. So the, the main limits that you're going to run into are uh, airspeed limits. So the, the airspeed limit, there's actually two on the low end. Uh, you've got a minimum uh, calibrated airspeed, which is 360, and a min ground speed, which is 400 ground. And whichever one of those uh, happens first, you'll get an airspeed caution. And, uh, and, the, and if you get below that, then the, the TFR is unable to protect you. Because essentially what it's saying is I don't have the G available to, to get you out of a bad situation uh, if necessary. The top end limit, and there is one, is 0.97 Mach. And essentially what that's saying is you're going too fast. I, I, can't, uh, I can't keep up with the commands uh, that would be needed to avoid terrain if you're doing, you know, Mach you know, 1.4 or something like that, you'll basically smack into the rocks no matter what. So basically keep it between those uh, limits and you'll get it uh, and you'll stay out of that airspeed caution. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Some other limits are the uh, are the main roll limits. So uh, that's primarily shown here by the bank carrots. Uh, normally it's uh, 60 degrees to the right and about 45 degrees to the left. And the reason why it's different is because the nav pod uh, with, with the TF radar sits on the right side of the jet over here. And to command to the left, like in a left-hand turn, it has to look through the jet, and obviously the jet has given it some masking. So it's always limited a little bit more to the left than it is to the right. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, uh, if you remember from the previous video on part one, these carrots breathe based on your G-loading. So if you're flying along straight and level, you'll get the max amount of bank, but as soon as you start rolling, as long as you're not pulling G, they shouldn't change much, but the moment you start uh, getting a command to climb and it's putting G on the jet, those are going to shrink down. So this is where normally where people get into trouble is they will, uh, in fact, let me go ahead and fly that. They'll roll to the limit and then the command will come up and see how the, the no, carrot altitude. will shrink out no, or, altitude. and put no, you outside altitude. of it uh, Low, with you having altitude. done nothing. Low, altitude. Low, altitude. Shut up, Betty. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So uh, I just I wanted to show you that. So realize you may roll to be inside of that, and then as soon as the airplane commands a climb, you may suddenly find yourself outside of that. So let's go ahead and show you the uh, the airspeed limit. I'll go ahead and slow down here. Put the speed brake out just to uh, get down there slow. So at 400 ground, you should start getting that airspeed caution. There you go. And then uh, whichever again whichever one comes first. In this case, the um, uh, the ground speed triggered that. So I'll go ahead and speed back up. And then once altitude. you get above uh, 400 altitude. ground, that airspeed caution should go away. Okay, so there we go. Airspeed caution's gone away. So let's talk about those roll limits. So normally when you're not putting G on the jet, if I roll to the edge of the carriage, you're fine. But then notice as I get a command, it immediately shrinks and I get that fly up. So that's something to be careful of is always be pay paying attention to those carrots. Uh, so if you do... Uh, if it does shrink down, you've got up to two seconds uh, before it gives you the flap. So let's say Low, I'm, uh, I'm Low, rolling there, altitude. I pull, it's gone Low, inside, altitude. I get the turn Low, rate, and as long as I recover within that two seconds, I won't get the flap. If I stay outside for more than two seconds, 1,001, 1,002, boom, there's the flap. So that's uh, what you're trying to avoid. And again, as a pilot, when you're flying TF, your concentration is pretty much almost 100% focused uh, on the uh, on the HUD and on the on the TF scope, this is basically a repeater of everything that's going on here. This is good information to see where you've got terrain coming up. But your primary focus is going to be out here in the HUD, especially at nighttime when you've got uh, nothing more than your nav flare picture to uh, to focus on. All right. So some other cautions. Uh, you've got a. Let me put it on pause for a second. So you also have the. Um, uh, I'm in manual TF on purpose. So if you're up to 75% below the um, uh, uh, the set clearance plane, uh, it'll give you a TF low, 
And if you don't begin recovering, it'll go ahead and give you a flap. So we're going to see that here in a second. Low altitude. So there's your TF low. low altitude. And if I low stay there, altitude. it'll give me the flap. Low so there's altitude. Low altitude. Low altitude. Low altitude. Low altitude. All right, Betty, I get it. Low altitude. Low altitude. Yeah, turn that off. Low altitude. Got it. So there's there's the other caution. The other cautions you're seeing constantly are like the turn rate. So again, if I see that turn rate for more than um, two seconds, it'll give me the flight. As long as I Get back inside, I'm good. But if I stay outside, 1,001, 1,002, boom, there's the fly up. One more uh, primary uh, caution that you're going to see is you're going to see either an obstacle. I'm going to pause it. You'll see either an obstacle uh, on the right side of the of the fly path marker or on the left. That's saying you've got an obstacle either side. And what what's happening is that the the radar scan is is actually scanning left and right. This terrain is only a little slice directly off the nose, like I said last time, but it's storing everything that's in memory uh, out there to the side. So what it's saying is if I get an obstacle left or right and I'm in a turn, let's say I'm in this right-hand turn and I get an obstacle here to the right, that means I need to immediately roll out, fly straight and level until that goes away, and then I can resume the turn. If I continue turning with that obstacle, I'm going to immediately get a fly up, and let's see if I can uh, make that happen. So I've got to get down here with a little hill. So let me get down low enough, start turning. It may or may not trigger it. Here's my obstacle. If I stay in that, it's going to give me the fly up. Obstacle ahead. Obstacle ahead. There you go. Realize that if you continue turning in there, you have a very high likelihood of uh, impacting the terrain. Because uh, sometimes that obstacle left or right, it's uh, it doesn't roll quickly enough to uh, get you out of the... Um, uh, out of danger. So I'm gonna. So there's my obstacle again. So all it's saying is, as long as I continue flying straight ahead, it's just information that hey, don't hey, dummy, don't turn into the terrain. As soon as it goes away, which it should here in just a moment. Once that once that uh, the rocks go far enough away, I can go ahead and begin my turn. Then if I get too close to the rocks, to the right, I'll get the obstacle again. There's my flap again because I'm exceeding those limits. Now, one more, one final thing on the um, ahead. one final thing on the uh, flyups. So we talked about how you get a flyup. Now let's talk about how you get out of the flyup. So again, I'm on manual, flying down this really cool valley. Realize if we were at night, everything's pitch black. We're not going to see all this stuff out to the left or right, which is why it gives you that obstacle uh, caution, so you know that there's something there and don't continue turning. This, in this case, it's saying there's obstacles on both sides, so fly straight ahead. So what I want to do is I'm going to uh, induce a fly up on purpose. So I'll get low. Should you get that TF low? Go over these power lines. Let's see if I can uh, induce a, a fly up here. So let me go ahead. It's quicker just to do the roll. So let's go outside of it. If I get a fly up and I do nothing, it's just going to continue flying me up until I take over the airplane. And it's going to keep climbing until it gets to a, a certain rate. Once I'm up, uh, away from the train, I'm comfortable, then I'm going to paddle it off with the paddle switch. So I've got my, my pinky on the paddle switch. I'm holding it. I'm going to push back over, get back down into the train. And then once everything's good, then I'm going to let go and, uh, and then recapture the box. Again, I'm in manual. So let's do this again. I'm going to go ahead and go down and, and arm it. So now I'm going to go into auto TF. Now it's going to automatically, I'm hands off at the moment. So let me, but it, it's allowing me to roll. So let's go ahead and, and do a roll. And I'm going to go outside at TF limits. Doing nothing should give me the fly up. And then once I'm away from the terrain, I know there's nothing I'm going to hit. And I'm going to paddle it. And now notice it takes it out of auto train following. I'm going to go ahead and push back over. And then once I've got the nose down, everything looked good, I let go. Sometimes you have to click the paddle a couple times to, uh, to get the auto TF uh, horizontal bar back up. And then everything is looking good. Okay. Let's do that one more time. I'll put it into a, a roll that will uh, exceed the limits. 1,001, 1,002. Boom, there's a fly up. I would let it continue flying up. I would then paddle off once I'm clear of the train, 
and then pitch back over and do it again. And then the one final gotcha with fly-ups is, it is uh, remember that airspeed, that minimum airspeed. So it's really common that if you're starting a little bit slow, let me, uh, let me slow down here. I've been in, constantly in the 500 knot range. So let's say I, I start off a little bit slower than uh, like in the 500s. And I would probably fly around at least 480, 500 knots ground speed, somewhere in that range. But let's say I start slow, but I'm still well above the airspeed caution, right? And now I get that airspeed limit. So 1,001, 1,002. And let's say the throttles are back. As I continue to climb, notice I'm going to get in that airspeed caution, and now I'm going to uh, paddle it off. I'm going to push over, and I'm like, why, why won't it re-enable? Why won't it re-enable? And the reason is, is because I've got that airspeed caution. I need to speed up. So I'd probably get the nose back up, speed up, get above the uh, airspeed limits, and then I would re-enable the, uh, the auto TF. In this case, I'm going to need a little bit of afterburner to get going. Get above 360 and above 400 ground. That airspeed caution should go away. There you go. And now I can paddle it off and uh, let it recapture. So those are a lot of the gotchas of, uh, of the TF, and that should keep you out of a lot of trouble. Again, I would not be in a super hurry. Like if I get a flip, I wouldn't be in a super hurry to immediately paddle it off. It may be annoying, but if it's super pitch dark, uh, I probably want to get it away from the ground. And that's where this MEA comes in. So uh, let, me, let me go back to uh, steer point one. Notice I put MEA with 6,900. And again, this is a, a manual thing that you have to put in. So this is your get well altitude. So if I'm in a fly up, I usually would go to at least that altitude before I uh, re enable it. You don't have to. Uh, by regulation, we did, but pull up, pull you, up, can, pull um, up, pull up. Uh, you can paddle it off earlier. But I would at least get away from the train a little bit before I paddled it off and tried to re engage. Because again, pitch black up, night up, and you're up, only on uh, nav flare, you, you may not know what's out there to your left or right. And uh, if you paddle it too early, uh, you may uh, hit the rock. So remember, the TF is not going to always save you because it, it does have limitations. Uh, it's not going to get you out of every situation. So that's why the biggest thing that was drilled into us is we always honor the fly-ups and get away from the ground before we even think about re-enabling it and trying to get back down once we know why we got a fly-up and once we know that we're away from the terrain. All right, that's it for not so. Uh, I will uh, start working on part three, and we'll do a little bit of a comprehensive uh, night sat mission using uh, TFR to do a, a, a night LGB target attack. All right, that'll be part three coming up soon. Not so out. Take care.